For this activity, you'll need to read sections 2 and 3 provided for you in the settings before you clicked on start this attempt. I'm going to go ahead and read aloud. You can follow along as I read. Who is Nog? He said. I am Nog. The great god Brahm put his mark upon our people when the first cobra spread his hood to keep the sun off of Brahm as he slept. Look and be afraid. He spread out his hood more than ever, and Riki Tiki saw the spectacle mark on the back of it that looks exactly like the eye part of a hook and eye fastening. He's afraid for a minute, but it was impossible for a mongoose to stay frightened for any length of time, and though Riki Tiki had never met a live cobra, before his mother had fed him dead ones and he knew that all grown mongooses business in life was to fight and eat snakes nog knew that too and at the bottom of his cold heart he was afraid so i'm going to stop and check for understanding here we know nog is saying that this brahm in our footnote here says it's short for brahma the name of a chief god of the hindu religion um, it said, Nag tells this story that the cobra spread its hood to keep the sun off of him. Um, and then Riki was um, just kind of thinking about how he's not scared of Nog here. He's eaten uh, snakes for breakfast, so to speak. And now we know that Nog is a little bit afraid of Riki Tiki because he is a mongoose and he does eat snakes. So I'm going to go ahead and read this next paragraph. Well, said Riki Tiki, and his tail began to puff up again. Marks or no marks, do you think it's right for you to eat fieldlings out of a nest? Nag th was thinking to himself and watching the least little movement in the grass behind Riki Tiki. He knew that mongooses in the garden meant death sooner than later for him and his family. He wanted to get Riki Tiki off his guard, so he dropped his head a little bit and put it on one side. Let us talk, he said. You eat eggs. Why should I not eat birds? Behind you, look behind you, sang Darcy. Riki Tiki knew better than to waste time in staring. He jumped up in the air as high as he could go and then just under him whizzed by at the head of Nagina, Nog's wicked wife. She had crept up behind him as he was talking to make an end of him. He heard her savage hiss as he, as the stroke missed. He came down almost across her back, and if he had been an old mongoose, he would have known that then was the time to break her back with one bite. But he was afraid of the terrible lashing and returned the... Uh, terrible lashing return stroke of the cobra. He bit indeed, but did not bite long enough, and he jumped clear of the whisking tail, leaving the Gina torn and angry. So I stop at the end of this paragraph and say, um, what do I know what's going on? I'm going to use that reading strategy. Darcy's warning Riki Tiki because Nagina is sneaking up behind him. She's trying to attack him, but he jumps up and misses her, but doesn't bite her fast enough, so she does um, whisk her tail around and now she's mad and she's hurt and then I'm going to read on wicked wicked Darzy said Nag lashing up as high as he could reach towards the nest in the thorn bush but Darzy had built it out of the reach of the snakes it only swayed to and fro Riki felt his eyes growing red and hot when Mongoose's eyes grow red and hot, he is angry, and he sat back down on his tail and hind legs like a little kangaroo and looked all around him and chattered with rage, but Nog and Nagina had disappeared into the grass. When a snake misses its stroke, it never says anything or gives any sign of what it means to do next. Riki did not care to follow them, for he did not feel sure that he could manage two snakes at once, so he trotted off to the gravel path near the house and sat down to think. It was a serious matter for him. 
That's the end of section two. I'm going to go ahead and read on in section three. If you read old books of natural history, you find that they say when mongoose fights, the snake happens and the snake happens to get bitten, he runs off and eats some herbs that cure him. That is not true. The victory is only a matter of quickness of eye and quickness of foot. A snake's blow against a mongoose's jump and has no eye can follow the motion of a snake's head when it strikes. That makes things much more wonderful than any magic herb. Riki Tiki knew he was a young mongoose, and he and it made him all the more pleased to think that he managed to escape the blow from behind. It gave him confidence in himself, and then Teddy came running down the path. Riki Tiki was ready to be petted. But just as Teddy was stooping, something flinched in a little a little in the dust. A tiny voice said, Be careful, I am death. It was Kurit, the dusty brown snakeling that lies for choice on the dusty earth, and his bite is as dangerous as the cobra's. But he is small, and nobody thinks of him, so he does more harm to people. And that's the end of section three. We've just been introduced there to Karait, the um, other snake living in Teddy's garden. He's not very friendly. As you read on, there is some literature and context to give us some facts versus fiction of cobras and making a connection to literature. So you can take time to read over that on your own. And we will be discussing this section of the story in class.